This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. And on the subject of charm, let's welcome in the charming Tom Murphy, who's in attendance, who's sitting right in front of me last night in Bud Walton Arena. Got a chance to to see Cal and everything he had to say. Tom, we appreciate you joining us. I I wonder, as as Cal talked about the challenge of filling the roster and asked Razorback fans to give it time, what other challenges do you anticipate him having to endure as the Arkansas head basketball coach? Oh, good morning, guys. And you're too kind, Ty. Um, yeah, plenty of challenges, but I'll tell you, he didn't seem very, I mean, overly concerned about, uh, it, it, he, he joked about it a couple of times. I met with a team, there is no team, but um, who knows, maybe a guy or two that entered the portal uh, might want to come back and start, you know, laying the foundation for the next roster, but what a masterful job of, of playing the crowd and just hitting on all the right notes by John Calipari last night. Um, he just... He knows his audience. He he, um, he he didn't get where he is by you know uh, being an introverted guy. He um, and I'll tell you, it sounded to me like what was important to him was how he emphasized to Chuck that he was a grinder uh, and he wants to be you know a guy who works you know works his team, practices hard. He asked Bob last night, "Have you ever been to one of my practices?" And Bob said he was never invited. Um, and then he wants to be, his friends call him Johnny, you know, Johnny Calipari. So, um, it it was certainly a, uh, a a great opening, you know, segment for John Calipari in front of the Arkansas folks. Tom, Hunter got asked about NIL last night. We've already had some texters that said they have signed up this morning. He said they're not where they, I'm paraphrasing, they're not where they want to be yet, but him and Cal behind the scene have kind of agreed where they want to read. Portally had meetings last night. How much of an impact do you think not just last night had, but the last few days have had on raising money for Arkansas Edge? Well, it was a big deal. Um, Certainly, they played it for what it was worth, and there was promos for sign-up for season tickets uh, yesterday and last night. Uh, I was the one who asked Hunter Juracek about the NIL, and uh, what I thought was interesting was he said, people are acting as if the the money is already in the bank, and it it is not. We have to keep working. Um, And so... This is a big deal, the, the push for NIL money, and, and, and obviously they're hoping it bleeds over into football because that needs it too. Um, but, you know, it was cool to see all the coaches there, Sam Pittman, Dave Van Horn, um, Hunter Yurchek rattled off the uh, rankings of all the teams. And, you know, it, 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 it surprises you a little bit when, I mean, eight or nine teams were in the top 15 in their sports. Pretty, pretty cool deal. Yeah. Tom Murphy with us on the McClarty Daniel Highline. Let's talk about job one, and that's roster construction. How quick do you expect to see some movement? I, I, I suspect Tom, they've, there's been there's been work done for the last several days, even though the introduction was last night. Are you expecting something the next day or two, or when do you think the first news will come that hey, we now have a player on the roster? <laughs> well, that's a great question, and no doubt, no doubt, as soon as John Calipari. Uh, understood that it was going to be, you know, it obviously was his decision. And he probably, um, I can't remember the exact timeline of when he, I think it was late Sunday night that he, that he said that, yeah, he's probably going to make it happen. Didn't want to step on the final four. I get that, which is a little bit old school, but you know, he, he understood how, uh, you know, how earth shaking the news was going to be. Um, but at that point, I'm sure he had an idea. And I mean, you saw, Big Z last night posted the, the picture of, you know, the, the graphic of Cal going to Arkansas, which was interesting. Um, I don't doubt that players who are committed to Kentucky uh, will come over. It, it, will there be an Arkansas player or two? And if, if I had gotten the last question in last night at the press, it was going to be, you played against some of these guys from Arkansas who were in the portal or in, any of those guys potential to come back. So I, I don't think it will take – very long before we start seeing guys who uh, who commit to the Razorback. I know he reportedly had a half a dozen or so staff members with him. Some of those would be coach coaching candidates. Some of those would just be those that help John Calipari. What what do you think the timeline will be? And I know this was spoken to a little bit last night as far as forming the staff and, and getting those that are going to surround him on the bench and, and in other roles in Fayetteville. Right, right. Probably very soon. Um, I uh, hope Ronnie Brewer winds up on the staff. Uh, obviously, 
you know, he had a lot to do with some of the great recruiting Arkansas had in the last few years. Um, certainly a former player, uh, a guy Cal has matched up against, um, I think, if the timelines match up good. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that type of news will start coming down the pike very soon. Yeah. He made it really clear it's a player's first system with him. He's all about the players. Our fan base and, and our people are all about the Razorbacks a lot of times. Do you think there's a potential collision or clash between those two philosophies? Um, you know, I, I think they could fit hand in glove pretty well. Um, and, and then it's the players who are playing for the Razorbacks as well. So um, I, I don't know. We'll just have to see what the long range shows on that front. Um, but yeah, never to throw a player under the bus. Um, as I mentioned on Tuesday, I've gone to a lot of his post game press conferences as, you know, the, the, the side beat writer, you know, when Bob's in there with Muss or Mike Anderson, whomever, whomever I've, I've been in press conferences with John Calipari and, uh, he's right. He, 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 um, he never like singles out players and stuff. So, I mean, you, they played a montage of Kentucky players, starting with John Wall and so on, who have attested to his commitment to players, the bonds he forms there. And, and I don't doubt that it's real because it's pretty much every Kentucky player who's come down the pike. And you heard DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, he was on some form of media in the last couple of days saying how Arkansas will now be a magnet for you know celebrities and there's going to be this entertainment value to what he does. And, that's all part of the deal now, you know. He was asking you kind of about the the draft narrative because I did find it interesting. I know he's he's big on getting guys to the NBA and whatnot. How do you think Arkansas fans to to kind of bridge off that are going to handle guys like Malik Monk or Archie Goodwin or, or those other Kentucky players <laughs> being in Bud Walton Arena? <laughs> yeah, the guys who didn't stay with the home state school. Uh, that's a good question. Um, but you know. Time uh, seems to ease things in er in every front that you can think of. Time eases things, and even though Ar there will be some Arkansas fans who would never, you know, forgive Malik Monk, Monk for leaving, um, it, a, a large section of them will be happy to have him back. I mean, he's still an active NBA player, so who knows when we'll we'll see him here in at Bud Walton, but. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if some Kentucky players that aren't from Arkansas will wind up visiting here, him here, as uh, uh, Boogie Cousins pointed out. It'll be okay because Coach Cal said it was okay. That, I think that's going to be the <laughs> the view for many. Um, Tom, last thing before we let you go, and we appreciate you making some time with us, as always, via the McCarty Daniel Hotline. Baseball team wins again last night, 8-2. They travel to Tuscaloosa this weekend. Peyton Stovall goes, I think, 4-4 four for four last night. He's now leading the team in, in, in batting average. David Horn says they haven't peaked. How does this team get better in your eyes and the fact that they've just been excellent these last few games? Um, that's a good question. Uh, hard to get much better from the pitching standpoint as they're leading the country in ERA by a pretty good margin over Texas A&M. Um, I think he's probably looking at his the hitting, and he's looking at Kendall Diggs, who's in a slump right now, knowing that, I mean, the guy hits in the three, four, five hole for you and will begin to produce better. Um, you know, Aloy is really coming along. Uh, in fact, he was asked about Aloy yesterday, what, would you give him a day of rest? And he doesn't want him to get out of the groove he's in because it took him a couple of weeks into the season to not chase everything and to not, you know, chase out of the zone and um, take walks and things like that. Because at the start, you were you were concerned he was so hyped to be playing in a major college uh, that he'd have a big hole in his swing and would chase. Uh, but he's gotten so much better. He got his average up over 300, so I think he's about 299 heading into uh, – oh, gosh, I saw a guy in a scooter just drive right in front of a car. Oh, um, no. <laughs> he's okay. Uh, but, yeah, so he's seeing, you know, his order. It, it, what I really like about what they have is I think this is the deepest uh, roster of position players we've seen. They can interchange, you know, Ross Lovich, Jason Jones, um, Will Edmondson out in left field. Uh, Jared Sprague Lotz rested for a couple of days. He's been one of your better hitters. And so Sousa's played third base and has continued to produce two run doubles and things like that. And um, But I do believe he feels like the batting order 
um, all in all, could you know a little higher batting average, better with runners in scoring position. They weren't actually very good at that yesterday. So I, I see what he means, and their peak can be a lot better than what they are right now. Yeah. All right. So Coach Cal, baseball, and oh by the way, the red white football game is on Saturday. <laughs> you know, yeah, kind of got lost. It, it did, and uh, you know. At, during the introductions last night of all the head coaches who were there ch- that Chuck rolled off, DVH got the biggest reception for sure, uh, sitting right next to Sam Pittman. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 you know, I think there's a, a bit of a quiet confidence that this roster is going to – they're going to be a better team. Um, he said that they're going to rest a lot of – well, all of, the, all of the ones in the second half, so that was pretty good to hear. Um, can't afford injury as thin as they are, but – I, I believe they're going to be a better team. Um, you know, the completion percentage for Taylor Green, you want to see up a little bit more. You can see maybe why he was in the high 50s at Boise State. That's got to be up into the 60s. Um, better tackling team, maybe. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see a good thing on Saturday with uh, the ones coming out at halftime. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.